Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today, we're going to do a Backwoods Gourmet twist on a St. Patty's Day favorite, some corned beef and cabbage. Stay tuned. So a lot of you probably grew up eating corned beef and cabbage like I did. My mom used to just throw that sucker in a pot of water, uh, put it on the stove a couple hours, let it get uh, almost tender, and then she'd dump some cabbage and onions in there, and the whole thing would kind of just cook together. It wasn't bad. Uh, I mean, I liked it, but you know it really all that broth and water and all that kind of stuff really diluted the flavor so today we're going to take our uh, big cast iron lodge fish pan i'm going to put that joker right over here it's actually already going on the weber kettle grill and i'm going to show you the backwards gourmet better way to do corned beef and cabbage so here's the items you're going to need you're going to need some bacon grease also have a couple of pieces of hog jowl bacon going over on the cast iron that's a one and a half medium sized sweet onions I got a about a half a he small head of red cabbage I have three quarters of a head of green cabbage uh, right here we have our flat of corned beef all right and I like to find the ones that are fatty all right for this especially for this we have a full strength beer uh, that's for cooking. Uh, for spices, we have some ground mustard seed. I did those in my spice grinder. Some freshly ground black pepper. Here we have some spicy uh, stone ground mustard. Okay, stone ground mustard. Or if you can't find that stone ground mustard, use uh, spicy mustard. And then there's that little pack that comes with the that comes with your corned beef. Uh, I don't know if we're going to use that at all. But, you know, we'll see how it goes a little bit later. So that's all you need to make your corned beef and cabbage. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my dry ingredients on the... Uh, I trimmed a couple of these little loose pieces off of uh, the brisket too. If you got any loose pieces, you might want to take those off. I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle this with our dry ingredients. There's actually some... Uh, the ground coriander in this mix right here also okay I want to get a good little coating this is a uh, ground mustard seed and ground coriander forgot to mention that maybe in the ingredients up front there but coriander is one of the ingredients is in that little spice pack it comes with your uh, your uh, this is really just a, a salt cured brisket this one is a low sodium. Got a little slippery on me. This is a low sodium one. It's, uh, Mrs. Backwoods is pretty sensitive to salt. All right, so a good coating of black pepper. Get that all on there. You want to do this a little bit ahead of time, putting it on the grill. All right, let it all kind of marry up. I mean, it's going to all get diluted in the end, so don't worry about getting too much on there. And that's a big piece of meat. It's going to take a lot of seasoning. So we're going to basically treat it kind of like a brisket. All right. So we do have this uh, stone ground mustard. That's going to come on a little bit later after we sear this thing off. So I have my Lodge cast iron pan under here. And if you want to know if the lid fits, just barely. It's almost like they designed it. I have a charcoal basket, Weber charcoal basket on both sides, about three quarters of the way full. I put a few lit coals on top, some unlit coals, and got those going. I've been having it over here preheating for a little while with some uh, jowl bacon. Uh, in there, you can use regular bacon if you don't got jowl bacon. I just like to rub those around the pan. Really helps with your seasoning. We do have some bacon grease over there if we have to need it. Here I don't know the, I don't know that we're gonna need it that much. 
and uh, that grill's getting up to about 500. I got the bottom open pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and let that get up a little bit higher temp. And I'm going to throw in a brisket. Corned beef brisket, that is. So I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more of my bacon grease in there. Those three strips were not quite enough. I'm going to use those though to wipe it around in there. I'm going to leave these off to the side over here. Make sure they don't burn. You're going to have a cool end down here, a cool end down there. But pretty much that's going to even out. Alright, so we got our corned beef. I'm going to go in there fat side down. Right in that bacon grease. I'm going to go ahead that lid right back on. Let's go in and take a look real quick. See it's drawing up a bit. Oh, I got a nice sear going on that side. I'll drag it around a little bit of that grease. That's rendered a bit of that fat. Let's go ahead and tip this pan just a little bit. Put that grease running around it. Back and forth. And put that lid back on. Give it a few minutes to sear the other side. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and this is the great thing about the uh, the Weber with the flip up grills. I'm going to put a chunk of orange wood in both charcoal baskets. Those are burning down pretty quick, so it's good. It's nice to have those flip up sides. You don't have to pull everything off. They're going to need refreshing charcoal there too. We're using Kingsford today. Uh, Kingsford Mesquite actually. Uh, it doesn't seem to burn as long as the hickory one. but And Kingsford is not the longest burning charcoal to start with. So we're going to have to refresh those charcoal baskets as we go. So as we're starting to steer that second side, it's going to come in here with some of this mustard we uh, prepared ahead of time. Smear it all over that side there. That will start to melt down in there. Give it a good seasoning. That's got the, remember the mustard and coriander. Gonna help to flavor that. Really good, I'll tell you that right now. So around the pan here now, since giving it a few minutes on that side, I want to get a little brown on these onions. I'm going to go ahead and start sprinkling them in around our corned beef. Man, that smell from that, that, uh, smell from that, uh, uh orange wood was kind of like smoking, barbecue, and I don't know what we're doing here. Combination of a bunch of things. So that's why this is a backwoods gourmet style. So I don't want to have just my mama's old boiled uh, corned beef and cabbage. I've never seen a dog have so much fun with a piece of coconut shell. He's dragging it all over chewing on it, ripping it up. So I'll switch those onions around a little bit, picking up a little color. So the fire is going to start burning down, so we got limited time to start getting all this stuff in here. In comes our green cabbage. Just going to nestle it. You can leave it in big chunks if you want like that. Nestle it around, right around our corned beef. And that's going to melt down considerably. You know anything about cooking cabbage, it's going to melt down. So let's go ahead and also grab our, our red and that's going to give us a little color to it. I like red cabbage too. so. Give some red cabbage around the corned beef there. Do 
great for a presentation. All right, stick the lid back on. Let's start cooking down. So I just kind of stirred that around a little bit, the cabbage in there. I'm gonna go ahead and give that just a little bit of Seminole Swamp Season. Since we're using a lower sodium um, piece of corned beef, it's less salty. So we're gonna need a little seasoning for that. I'll go ahead and put the lid back on. We're getting pretty close to starting the braising part of this recipe. Okay, so you see we're getting a little brownness on the tips of the cabbage because um, we're in like a bacon mode here. So it's looking pretty good. I'll go ahead and check the bottom of this guy. I'm sure he's not burning. We got enough uh, moisture coming down from that uh, cabbage now. It's going to keep that from burning. All right, so now it's time for the braise. I'm going to go ahead and crack our beer. Pour it right over top, around the edges there. I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of our mustard right down into the sauce. It's gonna help to thicken a little bit. Mustard is a very good, yellow mustard is a very good thickening agent. So I'm just gonna put that down in there. Give this a couple minutes to come up to a boil. Then I'm going to cover that with some aluminum foil. So that all came back up to the boil. I just gave it another two cups of water. I'm going to check the internal temp. It's right in the middle of the stall right now, 168, 169. All right, so, but we want to tenderize that a little bit further and make sure everything is cooked down. I did add two handfuls of charcoal to both chicken chimney baskets a little while back. Got the rest of that. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and cover the pan with aluminum foil. Alright, don't have to be super tight. Alright, so get it on there. We're gonna try to hold some of that moisture in. Let's get that lid back on. You looking? You ain't cooking. So I've been on there for a little while now and I'm going in there to the thickest part, taking the temperature. 203 is the target temp. We're at 204.9. So what we're gonna do right now is go ahead and take our tongs. We have to handle this big pan. These are actually the same ones they use for the large cook it all also. And we're gonna pull it off. Go ahead, I'm going to remove this aluminum foil. And man, that looks awesome. Temperature is perfect. It's going to let that vent off in a little while. This stainless steel table is going to help pull some of the heat out of the pan. We don't want it to overcook at this point. So, tell you what, I don't know, how, it looks a whole lot better than the uh, corned beef and cabbage that my mama used to make. Okay, we're going to go in and pull out our corned beef. Mm. Man, does that look good. I had it rest in about 10 minutes. So we know this grain, this corned beef kind of runs, this is a flat, so just like with a brisket, it's going to run at a little bit of an angle, so we're going to try to find that real quick. We want to make sure that we're cutting across that grain. It looks like we are, I mean it's really nice and soft, but not falling apart like my mom's boiled corned beef from my childhood and 
please guys don't don't try to do corned beef in a crock pot oh my god if you can see this right here you never do corned beef in a crock pot again all right so let's go ahead and make a plate with some of our Weber kettle grilled corned beef and give it a try. Got a little bit of the, uh, the cabbage and the uh, corned beef. I I know you want some of that. Mm. If you guys remember back in the very part first part of this, we put that mustard and uh, the seasoning on the outside of that corned beef. And that really shines through all the way to the end. And the cabbage, it's just perfect. Mmm. I mean, the whole thing picked up a little bit of that smoke and that orange wood and that charcoal. So if you're looking for something to do out of the box this St. Patty's Day on your corned beef and cabbage, might want to give this recipe a try. So if you like to try something different from your traditional boiled corned beef and cabbage, give this one a try. Break out that Weber kettle grill. You'll be glad you did. So if you like what we're doing, please smash that like button right down there to subscribe to our channel. You can do it right over there for another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's going to be right over there. And for a whole playlist of the cooking on the Weber kettle grill, it's going to be right up there. We'll see you next time.